this is Bez. Those of you who live beyond an appreciable distance of Manchester might not know what a Bez is. He's from the band The Happy Mondays. As you can see, he plays the maracas, but you can't really hear them. Bez's main job, his only job really, is to dance and smile and get the crowd in the mood for the event. And it works. He's very good at his job. That's why everyone within an appreciable distance of Manchester loves Bez, because Bez is awesome. Although he contributes nothing to the musical compositions, he is far from being a mere decoration. He has a personality. He's happy. He's outgoing. He puts you in a good mood. He's a geezer. He's a real crowd pleaser. <laughs> now, does anyone think the Happy Mondays were exploiting Bez? I mean, they did pay him in pills sometimes, but that's not the point. As you may have guessed, the conundrum... I thought I'd conjure for y'all this week, is how is this okay, but this is not. And furthermore, if I was to say to you that this kind of bez is okay, but this kind of bez is not okay, that this man can do what he likes, but these women should all lose their jobs, apparently that would be a pro-woman stance. <laughs> Where did you think you were? Right way up land? Oh, no, sir. We're taking the back-to-front exit onto Inside Out Boulevard and going right up the underpassage to Upside Down Land. Now's a good time to have a piss. There will not be a service station until we're on the other side of the Mobius Strip. Retrenchments in Formula One. What are we talking about? We're talking about the models who introduce players at the tournaments. Formula One is to stop the practice of using grid girls standing by cars before the start of Grand Prix. And this was after the walk-on girls were banned from darts earlier this week. So now there are calls for other sports to stop the practice too. But this morning we're asking, should walk-on walk girls, and for that matter grid girls, ring girls in other sports, uh, be part of modern day sport? So is it the right move at the right time or a capitulation to political correctness it's a capitulation certainly but i do wish we call it what it is rather than this euphemism political correctness especially if you're supposed to be having a political debate about this subject if you refer to one side of the debate as politically correct and the other side as politically incorrect then you give the impression that you're not exactly approaching this political debate with an open mind cut the wordplay and call it what it is please Sports organisers said the walk-on grid girls were at odds with modern-day societal norms. Thank you. It's not a capitulation to political correctness. It's a capitulation to, as you say, modern-day societal norms. Otherwise known as tradition. <laughs> modern-day tradition. Well, progressive traditionalism. <laughs> and, uh, it sounds like an oxymoron, but that's how it works. You come up with an idea, like, overnight, off the top of your head, and then you go, ah, it's a norm now. <laughs> I, know I only thought of it, like, three seconds ago, but it's a tradition now. So there's grandfather that motherfucker in. So we're going to, to listen to a few of these progressive traditionalists. Obviously, this ban has nothing to do with feminists. They did do nothing as usual. It's just a massive coincidence that everyone they bring on the news to speak in favour of it just so happens to be a feminist. As a feminist. As a feminist. As a feminist. I think it's a pretty old-fashioned thing, you know, to have girls really basically told to accompany the men onto stage or onto the uh, grid or whatever and told to shut up and stand there and look pretty and nothing else. Nothing else? N what about having a personality? Did you not notice that they have personalities there? Happy, outgoing personalities, just like Bez. Just like Walmart greeters. Or, you know, those, or those charity muggers who stand on street corners with clipboards trying to coax donations out of the general public. It's their job to come off as approachable. It's just like any salesperson or anyone in customer service. It's part of their job. Not just to look good, but to present a pleasant, confident and amiable personality. If they walk out there looking miserable with a face like a smacked ass, hunching over and dragging their feet like injured sea turtles, then they won't get hired again, no matter how pretty they look. Their job necessarily involves having a personality. But evidently, madam, this is all invisible to you. You can't see their personalities, can you? All you see is their bodies. Well, you're a pig, madam. A chauvinist one. 
Quit projecting your shit onto men, and while you're at it, leave these women alone. Uh, what are we teaching our like, children? Are we teaching them when, you know, you're watching spot with, with mum or dad? Yeah. Like, yeah, little Johnny can go and race the cars around the mm. track, but little Jenny has to stand on the sidelines in a short skirt. Really? Hey, little Jenny, is that true? Hi, I'm Rebecca Jackson. I'm a racing driver, TV presenter and motoring journalist for those that do not know me. She doesn't stay on the sidelines in a short skirt. She drives the fucking cars. Women already had the choice of doing either of these things. And much to a few people's surprise, I am actually in favour of grid girls. <laughs> well, sorry, your opinion doesn't matter either. It's the politically incorrect opinion, you see. These women, girls who have chosen to be grid girls are now having that choice taken away from them. And really, the idea of feminism, if you want to call it that, is that women have the choice to be who and what they want to be without judgment. <laughs> oh, Rebecca, you're so sweet. But, uh, but what, what you're looking at, Rebecca, what, what this story is, is yet more pretty hard evidence that choice is not what feminism is about. That dream is over, Rebecca. And if 95% of feminists are the kind of feminists who would rather take your choices away than allow you the choice of entertaining or pleasing men in any way, then we can reasonably say that this is what feminism is about. Now, if not always. Maximizing or optimizing the choices that women get to make is not important to feminists. What's important to feminists is minimizing the pleasure and the benefit that men are allowed to get, especially from women. Feminists claim they care about you, but they will stop caring about you the moment you start caring about men. And regardless of what it says in the dictionary, if you find yourself disagreeing with the vast majority of feminists, you're probably not a feminist. Or at the very least, feminism does not represent your interests, so I don't know why you'd call yourself one. Yes, it is a glamorous sport, and therefore glamorous women are involved, but also glamorous men should be invited, and that would be true equality. They did try blokes a couple of years ago. They did try blokes, mm. good guys. Well, that obviously yeah, yeah. went yeah. Yeah. badly. Yes, for a brief moment in history, men also had the choice of being either a grid model or a driver. Do you know what happened? They weren't very popular. They, they didn't you know, fulfil the objective of putting the crowd in a good mood as much as the female models did. People just didn't like the men as much. Now, you, you could call this discrimination against men, but it's not discrimination by the employers. It's discrimination by the audience. The employers are simply meeting the demand of the audience. And the audience is allowed to discriminate. Yeah, on whatever grounds they like. They're the audience. They're allowed to choose which events they want to go to and to pay to see. Evidently, sports enthusiasts are a little bit more discerning than Happy Monday's audiences. They're not all on ecstasy, for one thing. Uh, a sweaty, skinny guy dancing his bollocks off is hilarious to an audience of pillheads, but for sports audiences, it's not enough. Sweaty men are sort of par for the course over there. They want glamour, because that's different to them. They want maximum glamour. And it turns out, for whatever reason... In the eyes of this audience, women are more glamorous than men. Women are better suited to the job than men are. And that's why female models get paid more than male models, by the way, because people are willing to pay the difference for that much more glamour. So, sports modelling is a line of work dominated almost entirely by women. At least it was. <laughs> it's now banned. Getting banned across the board, as it were. It's for your own good, ladies. We think you'd be much better off shuffling into an office block every morning and trying to become a CEO. It's a great life. You'll love it. Fucking girl power and shit. That reminds me. Spice Girls, okay. Grid Girls, not okay. Why? The key here is it's a sort of decorative role that's making money for men. You're almost there. It's not about who's making money. It's about who's enjoying it. It's okay for pop music to have girls wibbling around in their underpants, but it's not okay for sport to have girls wibbling around in their underpants. Why? 
because women like pop music and men like sport. It's not because men make money from sport. It's because they enjoy it. They get one of life's simple pleasures from it. That is what these folks want to take away. That's what they find problematic and outdated. Men getting enjoyment from women. <laughs> that shit belongs in ancient history. It, it, it doesn't even matter how much women enjoy it. If men enjoy it more, it's got to go. Whatever it is. Even if it's women, yes. As, and as you were about to see, these people would rather completely remove women from the public eye than let them be in a situation where men enjoy them. Yes, we don't have a choice. When we grow up in a society which says that men do and women support, we give young people a visual about what their choices in life are and then they react to those choices. You no, know, this is 2018. There is no place in professional sport to have women as merely the adornments to the action that is performed by the men. People watching you, by people, families sitting there and watching you being in a decorative role, girls in that room might feel demeaned. What really concerns me is the message it sends out on a wider level to society and to young girls and women who are watching um, shows like Darts. And they, they, what they tend to do is they just see the role of women as sort of glamorous assistants on the side, while it's the men who get the centre stage. Yes, and now what are they going to see? Come on, I think you know the bloody easy answer to this bloody easy question. You've banned grid girls and walk-on girls, so now, what will the young women see when they watch these sporting broadcasts? <laughs> look, look, where are they, eh? Count the women you can see in this picture. Well, fuck the horse and shoot me in the dick, it's zero. The venue has been cleansed. It's to a pedigree fucking sausage party. Never mind standing on the sidelines in a short skirt. Little Jenny is now doing nothing. Nothing. A fucking Star Wars character. She might as well have spent the whole movie crying in the kitchen. Perhaps wearing a fucking hijab just in case a man sees her. Women's rights, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're moving in leaps and bounds now in some fucking direction or other. If the sport can promote itself well, it shouldn't need ring girls and, you know, these walk-on girls to make it more glamorous. The sport should be able to stand on its own two feet. Interesting point. A sport should be able to stand on its own two feet. You know, without receiving surplus energy from an outside force. Now say another thing. For me, I would much rather put people put their energies into promoting women's sport rather than promoting grid girls. <laughs> you just said the, the thing you just said. Sport, sport should be able to stand on its own two feet, except <laughs> women's sport. That needs to be subsidised. Grid girls, on the other hand, are standing on their own two feet without the assistance of any systems rigged on their behalf by ideological lobby groups. Or rather, they were standing on their own two feet and you didn't like it, so you cut their fucking feet off! We can't have women becoming independently successful now, can we? Why are you doing this? Who are you doing this for? For me. Of course. For me, for me, for me, I would much rather be celebrated for any kind of success I could achieve, I achieve rather than just standing there and look pretty. There it is. I, I would rather achieve sporting success than modelling success. I don't even consider that a kind of success. So other women should be banned from having this thing because I prefer a different thing. It's one of the most childish, entitled attempts at an ethical argument I've ever heard, but it worked. Apparently it convinced everyone. How the fuck did everyone get this stupid? So where do we stop next? Do we stop cheerleading? Do we mm. stop the big American basketball games as well? Yeah. Good point. What about all this business? Let me guess. Let me do. Let me do. I, do I have this right? The, the, these these ladies these these roles are unacceptable things to be in the current year. Women shouldn't be allowed to be to to do it. But this role here, <laughs> yeah, perfectly acceptable. This is the good kind of bears. So, yeah, sorry, ladies. Sorry, uh, you know, cheerleaders and all that. I know you're very comfortable dressed as you are in attire appropriate for dancing around. But it has to end, I'm afraid. From now on, if you want to make money supporting or promoting a sports event, you have to dance around under those blazing stadium lights in two layers of insulated rubber suit. Just like the men. Because <laughs> there's nothing sexual about furries now, is there? 
where do you draw the line? What, what do you think about cheerleading, for instance? I mean, I'm not really a fan of any kind of sport or any kind of event that celebrates women purely for their looks. Well, cheerleading's not just about the looks, they're well, very cheerleading and dancing, they are like, like, like... You broke her. You th this one's FUBAR, I need another one. Look, I told you before, this, she... When she looks at other women, she does not see their personalities. She does not see the skills they're applying. All she sees is this mismatch of body parts. Yeah, and she thinks, well, if this is what I'm seeing, it must be what men are seeing, and not what I'm seeing. <laughs> no, dear. Men see cheerleaders as the professional synchronized dancers they are. Men see grid girls and walk-on girls as the professional models they are. And men notice the delightful smiles on their faces and the motivating spring in their step. And they respect their ability to keep it up professionally. You are entirely the one with the problem, young lady. You think men have no respect for women because you have no respect for women. As far as you're concerned, if they're not good enough at sport to be professional athletes at competition level, then they don't belong anywhere near a sporting event. You only want to be around the elite 1% most physically and financially accomplished specimens. The rest of the rabble could get out of your sight until they're at your level. You are a selfish, dogmatic brat, and you need to grow the fuck up, okay? Before you and your sisters do even more damage to people's lives than you already have. And now you. Isn't it their right to, to work in whatever job they so choose? Yep, so there are, that's a rights argument, so that's also used for sex work, for sex work. For, for sex work, for example, it's our right, it's a choice, and that's one argument. I mean, I come a bit from a background of having worked in a bar and done some of this work. In a it's, it's, it's no surprise or secret that your average walk-on girl is not exactly very bright or articulate, but by Jove, are they ever polite. Which is a fuckload more than can be said for feminists. I'd love to know what words were spinning through this young lady's head as she visibly but silently struggled with what she just heard you say. The question was, shouldn't these women get to do what they want? And your answer was, well, that's what a whore would say. That with the fucking snaky head movement you did, that's what a whore would say. You didn't address the substance of the question whatsoever. All that was, was you would say that you're a whore. She's talking like an evil bitch queen from Game of Thrones and she thinks she's the good witch of the fucking North. Again, these people feel no burden or obligation to give a fuck about other people. They will say the most horrifically rude and selfish things to people, just unfiltered to their faces in front of thousands of viewers. And they still think they're in the right. They still think they're being polite and reasonable and enlightened and compassionate, even as they deprive women of the things they love for the sake of also depriving men of the things they love. Why in seven valleys of shite is anyone still listening to them? Men and women enjoy men and women looking at them. They, they physically, they, it makes them feel great. I don't mind that and I think however anybody wants to dress, but I think these brands are trying to move with the times. It's just a bit 70s for me. Yeah. <laughs> I have no problem with women enjoying themselves. Dot, dot, dot. I just think it belongs in the past. <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely fine with it. I'm all for it. I would just rather it you know, didn't exist in the present or the future. Please. They, they physically, they, it makes them feel great. I don't mind that. And I think however anybody wants to dress, but I think these brands are trying to move with the times. It's just a bit 70s for me. That's what she, that's what she fucking said. <laughs> Presented with the argument, but women enjoy this. Her response was basically... Yeah, but fuck it, it's the current decade. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm slowly closing out this video with the most insanely fuck-headed statements I've found on this journey. So it's, it's inevitable that I would end up leaving loose women till the end. Check this out. And they will do modelling work other places. Yeah. This is one job in their But then year. it's modelling But are they all going to go? Women. Well, because modelling, they're selling clothes. It's, uh, can, I, can anyone figure out what's going on there? I, it's... It's not objectification for women to model clothes, but it is objectification for them to model sport. 
Yeah, because sport is just an object, or his clothes. Or, uh, look, I look. There's just, there's nothing old fashioned or traditionalist about women wearing dresses, but women advertising Formula One engines. That's just, what is this Victorian times? <laughs> okay, last one. I have, of course, left the biggest jaw dropper till the very end. You may wonder just what kind of shit they can say with a lackluster attempt at a straight face. Get a load of this. But then a lot of girls that do this have got in touch with our colleagues on Five Live and said, well, actually, that's stopping me doing a job that I'd quite like to do. I want to have the choice to be able to. They don't really have the choice anyway. When all else fails, when you've run out of material along the lines of women's choices don't matter, just pull the vehicle around and go full Sarkeesian. Women don't even have choices! I got the job, um basically by bugging uh, the team, Silverline Chevrolet, as much as I possibly could. Um, I'm one of those people that never give up, um, and so eventually I got what I was after. Um, it's something I absolutely love motorsport, so I've always wanted to be involved in it. Wrong! Uh, impossible, my dear. <laughs> you thought you were making the choice to pursue your dream job, but it was, no, it's all an illusion, you see. You don't have choices, because why not again? They don't really have the choice anyway. That job can be taken away at the drop of a hat. Because it can... <laughs> you see, <coughs> it doesn't count as a real choice. You're not really exacting any agency by getting a job unless it's one of those jobs where you absolutely can't be sacked for any reason. Do grid girls have tenure? I don't know. <laughs> well, it's not good enough, ladies. Come on, make an effort. You should join feminism. When have we ever let you down? <laughs> good luck in the job centre, by the way. Now, wait, it gets better. If by that, I mean there is greater distance for your jaw to keep dropping. Listen to this. They don't really have the choice anyway. That job can be taken away at the drop of a hat. It's a complete illusion. No, but they of any choose to do the job. They choose to do the job that's available. But the job is no longer available. So they don't have any genuine choice in it. If you think about it, this decision has been made. The brass ovaries on this chick. The gigantic. Pendulous lady balls on display here. <laughs> the question was, should women have a choice? Should they? And after a hop, skip and a jump, the answer is, yeah, well, they don't. <laughs> Not anymore. We took it away. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you see what I mean? They don't even care what they're saying. They just bail on any effort to address the question at hand and go, fuck it. You grid girls are whores. You can't have what I don't want, and that's just the way it is. It's tradition now. We made it one. <laughs> and you can't argue with our traditions, because our traditions are politically correct. And it is a tradition, what they're doing. They've done it countless times before. They go into a market that's created and populated mostly by men, paid for and experienced mostly by men, and they go, you can't do this, you can't do that, because women don't want to see it. We should know! We speak for all of them! Now go home, grid girl! Watch where she goes from here. They don't have any genuine choice in it. If you think about it, this decision has been made by men, presumably. Thankfully... <laughs> it wasn't us! Men did it! Oh, wait, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, we, if you think it's a bad thing, then men did it. If you, but if you think it's a good thing, then, then we did it men presumably thankfully and and you know huge congratulations to the bbc for making a stand on this because times had to change the professional darts corporation in collaboration with the bbc as you say have made a decision that this is no longer appropriate yes there, there, there's the twist in case in case you were wondering the reason darts and formula one no longer have women in their entourages is not because of its customers or its employees or even its top brass it's because the bbc doesn't like women being in entourages. The, the all-seeing eyes on the other end of those cameras spinning around in the corner of the studio. That's, they're the ones dictating what's going on at the sporting events. The players can go fuck themselves. The girls can go fuck themselves. The live audience can go fuck themselves. And the sports fans all over the world can go fuck themselves. It's not about what any of these people want. It's about what the BBC wants. And it's certainly got nothing to do with the license payers or what they want. Why should the BBC give any fucks about the uneducated plebs who pay for them to exist by force? Now, this is, this is about the bosses and the executives or whatever at the BBC 
you know, the ones being subsidised by the stolen and extorted wages of the people, uh, looming down from their ivory tower and telling us what to think, telling us what is good and true. And as far as they're concerned, as far as the wisdom of these blessed elders can bestow on us, the goodly truth that we must all believe and accept is that women do not have the necessary qualifications to be bears. Goodbye and fuck right.